And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Gina Pascal, who had a near-death experience that was caused by aliens, and today we're going to learn about it. Gina, thank you for being my guest, and welcome. Thank you. Gina, my audience loves to hear about NDEs, so if you don't mind, can we start with yours, or if you have any backstory that you need to tell us, let us know. Sure. Um, okay. So... I have a lot of backstory, but I'll just give you a snippet. So the the first experience that I remember having, um, I was three, and I was laying in my bed one night getting ready to go to sleep, and I saw something moving on beside me on the bedside table, and so I looked over and it was in full color, and and it was like what we would consider now like a hologram, and all of these little people and animals were moving around and doing stuff and they were just busy, busy. And I was watching because it was very colorful and they were doing, I was looking to see what they were doing. And at three, I didn't know that this was an unusual occurrence, that this doesn't, isn't something that everybody sees at different times. And so I didn't think much about it. It was kind of almost, which we didn't have, color tv back then but had we of it would be kind of like that only it was it was more real looking so um so i'm watching these people and there's this big well to them to scale a big wooden boat and they're putting animals in the boat and they're not panicking but they're busy they're doing their thing and so i watched for a long time until i finally got sleepy and i laid down and went to sleep Many years later, I was I was at a babysitter's house. She had a Bible, and, and I had not seen a Bible before. I'd never been to a church. And I was looking in it, and she took me to her church, but and which was way different. Like, a, that was, and I liked it. It was really cool because you get to sing, and, you know, so I thought it was very interesting. But I'm looking in her Bible, and in the middle there were pictures And I turned the page and there was a picture that was exactly what I saw on my bedside table. And I started screaming and jumping up and down. I'm like, that's it. I was about, I think, eight years old. And I'm like, that's what I saw. That's what I saw on my bedside table that night. And it was Noah's Ark. It was Noah's Ark with Noah and his family putting the animals in the ark. And I always somehow knew Later, it became more and more clear to me, really, that this was going to have something to do with the time that I'm living in, that that was something that was necessary for me to see because of what I would be doing here and the time that I'm in. So, you know, this was, what year was that? That was in 66. So, um and and it's just it it was it it still is real mm-hmm. like i still remember vividly you know the detail of it so i had a lot of experiences that were i guess would be considered supernatural along and along as i grew up i didn't grow up in that family i grew up um different relatives, foster homes. I was pretty much on my own and I was completely on my own at 15. So, um, I didn't have, it was a very different type of childhood. It was not a good one, but I had constant companionship that was otherworldly. And so my relationship with our creator, um, which I call father, because it's like a father, very large father, mother type energy was always with me. And so I was used to paranormal, a paranormal type of life, a supernatural type of life. 
but I wasn't prepared for what happened to me when I was 16. It, It was very different. So I was in my bed asleep one night. I was 16 years old. I was on my own. Um, and I woke up because I, I woke up because someone was staring at me, which is kind of weird, but it woke me up abruptly and I turned and looked and there is a being, a, a live physical being just sitting there staring at me with big, huge black almond shaped eyes. I went out of my body, which started, I started going through the ceiling, my body, my physical body somehow catapulted across the room and me, I left my body on the floor. I saw it on the floor. I went through the ceiling as fast as I could through the attic. This was an apartment that I had rented and I didn't even know it had an attic until I went through the attic and I was coming through the roof, like really fast. This wasn't slow. And there was a, some type of spaceship thing, some vehicle with other beings that looked like him up there. So I went back down because that was scarier than one of them. And so I literally went back down, went back into my body, like thud, and I'm sitting there like patting myself to make sure I got all of me back into my body. And at that time, I had just got, even though I was 16, I had just gotten married and because I came out of foster home. So it was, you know, it was a different type of childhood. And my husband is like over me going, you're in your body. You're in your body. You are, you are. It's okay. You're in your body. Cause he could just see that I was like checking to make sure I got back in my body. That was my first, we, we moved from there. Like I left, I said, we have to go I get out of here. It was terrifying. It was something about the way it felt. It wasn't, he didn't do anything. It was just that cold stare. That he was just, it was, I, it's, I can't describe it. It was the feeling of him and, and the other beings that were with him apparently. But um, we left that apartment. I never went back. He had to go back and get our stuff. I wouldn't even go back in there to get mm. my clothes. Like that was it. I was done. We went to his parents' house. We stayed there until we got another place. Now at the beginning, when you left your body, I thought you said that your physical body kind of went across the floor or something. It did. When you, it did. When you came back to into your body, were you still over there on the floor somewhere? On the floor. Mm-hmm. Do you, yeah. What do you think caused your body to go across the floor? I think I, with my physical strength, like just jumped. And so my body, but that wasn't far away enough from him. Like, I don't know how that mechanically works, but how it worked for me was, so my body hit the floor and I left it right there. So it's kind of like due to the fear, you had had an NDE where you just left your body, took off. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's what happened. It's interesting that you say that because I feel like a lot of people, maybe even including me, if I had encountered an alien, you know, it might freak me out just as much. Yeah, it was pretty scary. It it was certainly not. um, It was abrupt and shocking. And I didn't even believe in aliens at that time. I mean, I was 16 year old, you know, and so I, I. I believe in them now, Yeah. but after that happened, several years after that happened, I was contacted by a different type of other, otherworldly beings that are not from earth. And so I was taken to other realms and, and I got to visit and and they taught me a lot of different things like they taught me how you this sounds so weird to say it but out loud and I don't think I've ever told anybody this but um they taught me things like you actually can levitate yourself off of the ground 
like even on a planet that has gravity. And so they, we were, they were teaching me how to do that. And we were practicing um, in my front yard. Literally, they came and got me and, and were teaching me how to like levitate off the ground. And then, so it's, it sounds really weird, but, and then they took me to um, realms that like, what was that movie that when it first came out with the aliens um, that was so avatar, Mm -hmm. the first time I saw that movie, I cried through the whole movie because I was just sitting there going, this is so similar to what it's like there. And I don't know what the name of the, the realm is or the planet, but, but so it's realms like the, the colors are different. Um, the beings are different. The energy is different. Like um, there are some places where there are, it's almost like electricity in form. So it's like long silvery and it feels electric kind of long silvery beings. Um, very, very loving, like the kind of love that really isn't on this planet much. And that's where I learned love. Now, when you went to those places, did you go out of body or in your physical body? I went out of body. All of these, I went out of body, except for when they were teaching me how to levitate off the ground, which I, I still don't have that very well, but so when they were I was te- in my physical body. When they were teaching you that, you were in your body. Yeah. Where were they teaching you? In my front yard. So, they and- literally came and got me in the middle of the night and took me into my front yard and showed me how it's an energetic thing. It's not a physical thing, Mm -hmm. but if you can energetically get yourself relaxed enough and sink back enough, and then it's your thoughts that actually your belief, I guess your belief system and your desire put together that, but you have to, you have to know that it can be done. So it, it's kind of like when you see something can be done and they showed me that they could do it, then you believe in it because you saw it. And that kind of breaks that barrier. Right. Yeah. I think for anybody, if once you've seen it done, then you can right. then then you you understand know. it's possible. Right. So what did those beings look like? They look more like the beings in avatar with like, they're all different. They're, they're not exactly human, but they're not, they're not, not human. Mm -hmm. So they have humanistic characteristics, but they're, um, it's hard to describe. Were they different colors? Like in avatar, they were blue. Some of them are, they're different, they're all different. And the realm that they come from is, I don't know how to, this is so hard to describe. It's more energetic than it is physical. Like, like all communication is pure and perfect because it's 100% telepathic. And it's like the purest form of love, but before you even think something like it's, it's automatically there is full disclosure. It's, it's just so it's those things make it so different than earth that those are the things that I guess I paid most attention to, you know, like the feeling of love. It's the feeling of the everything and the full knowing Did you ever mention to them that you previously saw aliens? No. I'd be curious to know what they know about the other aliens that you saw. It's so overwhelmingly wonderful that anything that ever happened that was not wonderful just 
fades away. It, it's like it didn't, it's just irrelevant at that point. You know, it, it's the, the feeling that they give off that pure unconditional love and acceptance and, and it, it it's very hard to describe, but in that state, all, none of that, all that other stuff just seems so trivial. Like everything that we do here is like, yeah, that was, you know, it's not important. Do you think that people can mistakenly think that those beings are angels? Maybe. Maybe, but I've I've seen what I would consider to be angels too, so I know the difference. Okay. And that and they weren't in that realm. Let's go back to your initial one, the one when you were sixteen. How did you change after that? I know that you didn't want to go back into the apartment, but did you change in any other way? Um I think I did. I, I think it changed a lot of my priorities. So what I thought was really so super important before that, maybe, um, you know, things like you know, at 16, it was important to me that, you know, like going shopping was a big deal, getting, you know, that car that I wanted was a big deal. Um, going out with friends and doing fun stuff, you know, that just normal, even though I was working um, and, and I was married, which was a little odd for that age, but, but I still had, you know, same 16 year old kind of stuff, but I think I became more serious. And I know for a while I was scared. I was afraid of the dark for a long time. I'm still kind of a little afraid of the dark, even though that was a really long time ago and I've had lots of good experiences since then. It's still just knowing that exists. I can still remember that exact feeling and I don't want to ever encounter that again. So um, definitely it changed me in that way. I was scared for a long time, like that they were going to come back mm -hmm. and it's follow me. It's interesting that you don't want to encounter them again even though they didn't do anything to you hurtful. Mm -mm. They why didn't is, do anything. Why is it that you think that you don't want to encounter that? Why are they so scary? Okay. So I can, I guess it would be kind of like if, if you went to the fair and you rode a ride that like dropped. And so you went, you know, it took you way up high and you were afraid of heights and it dropped and you remember that sensation of your stomach mm -hmm. like goes up and the rest of you goes down. So it's, and you can always remember that feeling you go, well, every time you'd see that ride, you may say, I don't think I want to, no, I'm not getting on that. I'm not getting on that because I don't want that feeling again. So it's kind of like that. It's like, I don't ever want to feel that kind of, it's a very cold, detached, uncaring um, to encounter a being that f it, f it felt like he just, it was so uncaring and detached. And I guess it, it would be, you know, kind of like uh, someone without a conscience. Like it, he was, it, it, that was the feeling. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever want to feel that. I don't mm -hmm. ever want to encounter that again. I thought that perhaps those gray like aliens with the big almond eyes are possibly just even robots, like bio robots. And you just said that it felt like they didn't have a conscious. Do you think that's possible? Yeah, I guess that that's possible. It just felt so ominous just to have, and, and two, the environment, you know, I was asleep. I was in a vulnerable position mm -hmm. and, and that, that being was just sitting there staring at me. So for him to have access to me like that 
what that was, you know, yeah. If he'd have come to the front door and knocked on the door and said, Hey, I'm doing a survey, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I would have felt very different, mm -hmm. but it, it too, I guess, you know, I never thought about it, but it did show that he had zero respect for my space, mm -hmm. for my privacy, for my feelings, for my well being. Mm -hmm. How did your husband react to all this? Um, I just re I remember when I came back into my body and I was trying to get myself back. I was patting myself back into my body and he was, he just knew something really, really horrible. He didn't see him. He said, cause I asked him after the fact, you know, so what did you see? And he said, I, and I told him what I saw. And he didn't see him. Mm -hmm. He just saw me as I was going across the room, like flying. He said, you went from the bed to the door in one leap. I don't know how you did it, but oh, you wow. flew across the room and hit the floor lifeless. And so he jumped up to go. He thought I'd killed. I had died like I was lifeless on the floor. And so he was over my body like are you Gina, Gina, wake up, Gina, are you okay? You know? And then when I started doing this and I sat up and I, and I guess I like reanimated and he was like, you're okay. You're in your body. You're okay. So he could tell somehow that, that I had, my body didn't have me in it. And then it did. Mm. Oh. So he was scared. I mean, it, it really, it was very scary for him. He was also asleep. <laughs> So, um, and he understood that, you know, what I had experienced was terrifying and he knew me well enough to know that that doesn't happen to me often. That did not, you know, I would take it then that he believed you. He very much did. He even, he and his dad went up in the attic and looked all around in the attic to make sure there was nothing up there. They came back and told me and said, we searched the whole attic. There's nothing there. Cause I kept saying they're up there. They're up there, you know, search the attic, search the attic. And cause my mind could only think this has to be some kind of a physical alien that's moved into the attic of this property. Like right. I really just couldn't put it together, Wow. but yeah. His whole family believed me. Has the memory of that faded over the years? No. No. I, this is the first time I've really talked about it in 40 years. Would you say that's the first time you ever went out of your body? Yeah. I think so. I mm -hmm. think it is. It's the first memory that I have of going out of my body. When you went up outside of your house and you went up, were you just looking at their ship or did you actually kind of go inside and that's where you saw more of them? I don't think I went inside. If I did, I have zero memory of that. I remember going, oh no, and going right back down through the roof, through the attic, through the ceiling, mm -hmm. back into my body as mm -hmm. fast as I could. Do you remember? I was just trying to find a way to escape them. Do you remember what their ship looked like? I don't. I remember that there were several of those little gray beings and there was some kind of very large something that was above where they were. So I'm assuming they came out of that thing, but no, it was so fast that I didn't really get a good look at the ship. Did you ever ask the other aliens why they chose you? Um, I did not ask them why they chose me, but I, I did have, I have a kind of a clue. Well, a few clues throughout my life that I've kind of put together. Um, I'm, I'm wired differently. I'm hardwired. I just always have been hardwired differently than a lot of my peers. And I'm pretty sure this may be my first earth incarnation. Mm. I'm 
because I'm I'm not I'm still learning um a lot of a lot of things about being human. Mm-hmm. So it's um and my life is not a, a typical human type life, but um And a a lot of my friends ask me, you know, what spaceship did you fall out of? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what planet did you come from? And so for years I did kind of look into different alien races and thought, well, maybe, you know, I'm hybrid or I came from some other alien race because in, in some of these realms, they know me, they know my name. I have different names in different realms. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I can, encounter you know like i'll be with one of my beings that came to get me from here and i will be going past someone else and they'll say hi and they'll say my name on that planet or in that realm and so i recognize that i actually do exist in that realm also and there were times that you know i really wanted to leave this one and because it was just, you know, and I, I would pray and ask like, am I done with this yet? Can, can I come back to where I came from with the beings that, you know, that I'm more like than, um, earth is hard. It's, it can be really hard. And so I was, I was given different I was allowed to go into the future and in one of these um, experiences and see what it was like living in this timeline and this like so it was still me. This Mm -hmm. is so hard to explain. It was still me, but it's me in a different realm. I don't know if it's the same planet or not. I tried to find out in a couple of them that they but they would take me into different. I guess, timelines and realms that I exist in to see if I'd rather do one of those than to do this one here. And I don't know if it's maybe like swap with the me that is there. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I was given like, what do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? One of them I was, um, seems like it was in the past. It was definitely not in this modern time. And I'm Native American woman. I have a Native American husband, but we're pretty lonely because a lot of our tribe got wiped out. And so it's good as far as our relationship with one another and with the the members that are left of the tribe that we're in. But it's still kind of sad because we've lost a lot of our tribe. And then in one, I was in the future and I had three children and um a husband and my father-in-law also lived there with us in the house and i mean i could still describe to you the house um but i i knew i was in the future my children had different colored hair so this was before this was maybe 15 years ago this was before people started coloring the hair blue or pink or purple or whatever so my daughter's had like one of them had pink hair and one of them had purple and blue in her hair, you know? And I thought I have to be in the future. The television was a ginormous flat screen. We didn't have flat screen back then. So I thought, wow, look at that. You know, it's up on the wall and it's just like flat to the wall. And they were playing a video game or something. And, you know, I walked in the room, they're like, Hey mom, you know, they're still doing their video game. They don't notice that I am not the me. I must have like gone to take a nap or something because it was like I was getting up. I walked through um, the room they were in, which was like a big uh, family room and went down the back staircase. And I had a daughter that was in like a playpen. She was asleep, a baby toddler. And then came in uh, from that room to the kitchen. I was trying to figure out like what year is this? And where am I, you know, and I open the refrigerator and there's nothing in the refrigerator except for like what looked like um, peeled pear halves on a tray cut in half. 
on a tray and that's all only food in there. That's like, that's the food. Okay. Mm-hmm. And whatever year this is. So I'm looking in the refrigerator and my husband, and I could feel that's my husband walking in and he's like this buff dude, you know, and he says, you better not eat that. You've already had too many of those. You're starting to look a little porky or he used mm-hmm. some word like that. That was not a common word that we use now. And I'm like, gee, thanks. You know, I can tell you're a real winner. <laughs> and so I said, um, I said, yeah, I was just going to go outside. And he looked at me funny, like outside, you don't want to go outside. And then he got this look of recognition, like you're not you. And I got scared and I ran for the front door. He yelled something to his dad, like, it's not her. And like, it was a case of the body snatchers. I'd snatched the body. And in in this body, I was taller than I am now, thinner, um, but, you know, not real remarkable features, just normal looking young woman. And I run out the front door and I'm thinking I got to find a newspaper. (laughs) Okay. So when I had this happen, newspapers were a big deal and there's no newspaper. I'm looking for newspaper as I'm going through the house and I'm go out the front door. And when I open the front door and it seems like it's middle of the day, but it's pitch black, dark and pouring down rain, but there's no sun. And I guess they got me. And then I left that body and came back. And I guess the, the me that's her went back into the body. I don't even remember what your question was. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I've had at least one guest talk about that. All our lives are kind of playing out at the same time. And it kind of sounds like something like that was happening or you popped into other lives or. or It was me, but it was a different me, a different version, but almost like I live simultaneously different versions of me and I could choose to swap with one. You mentioned that you may have been from somewhere else. Do you consider yourself a star seed? I'm not sure what, you know, I don't even know how to answer that because I just, I'm not, I've not been given an identity or a label from anywhere, you know, that, that, so I really, I don't know the only, like there's one heavenly realm that I get to go into. And in that one, um, my name is a song. Your name is a song? It's a song. It's a whole entire song. So I I think, I just think that, I think here, because we have such a microscopic kind of focus here that we just forget, we've forgotten that we're so much bigger and there's so much more. And I think sometimes labels may restrict us. For, you know, so I, I I don't know that. I think we're all like, I really think we all probably come from the same places. And we've forgotten we get here and we get this crazy amnesia thing and we get focused into a really small, like, I think when you, when we leave this incarnation and this planet, a lot of people are going to be really, really shocked and go, oh, wow, I forgot all this. It's Mm. wonderful. It's beautiful. There's so much to explore. There's nothing boring. It's not like we're going to go sit somewhere on a cloud and go, I made it. I did good. I'm done. No, we just go on to our next adventures and there's so much, but to think, I guess, you know, the beingness that created all of this, that's like unending, it's unending 
and the creativity is unending because it's ever expanding, there has to be, we, I don't think we'll ever be able to explore it all. I think there's so much. Now, in the beginning, you kind of started with a backstory dealing with Noah's Ark. How does Noah's Ark play into these aliens? Well, <clears throat> I think Jesus Christ is an alien. I think God is an alien. I think all beings that are not Earth humans are probably what we would consider aliens. So I think that the beings who told Noah, uh, rain is coming and you better build a big boat because it's going to last for a while and it's going to be big. They probably weren't, you know what I'm saying? Like they were otherworldly beings. Some of my NDE guests will say that we are, we are actually God, I believe, like part of God, but we separate from God. But then when we yeah. go back to the other side, we return and become one with God. What is your opinion yeah. on that? I agree with that 100%. I do. I think I I have been to the nothingness, the oneness, nothingness, beingness, which is what I believe is God. It's all that there is, but it's it is complete. It's indescribable. You can't describe it. And I think that's where we all came from and we're all probably going to go to. I think that, um, I think that we're all having experiences and, and maybe we're learning and we're growing, but we're exploring. I think we're, we're explorers. And, and I think that, you know, we decided to to come to this planet and have this experience. But truth be told, I really think that we are all one. Like, I think we're all one from the same place. And we're going to go back and see each other and go, I saw you on the earth. I knew that I knew you. But, you know, I could feel that I knew you. you're my brother, you're my sister. I feel that way about everybody here. Like, it's, it, I almost sometimes, like my whole life, I've thought that at some point we're all just going to look at one another and go, this is so funny. Like, this is a pretend thing that we're doing. I'm pretending like I don't know you and you're mm -hmm. pretending like you don't know me and that we're not family and we're not from the same place. And you're taking your role and your identity here and we're taking it very seriously. But it's not. It's just, it's like theater. It's like. I'm pretending like I'm Gina Pascal, who is an identity, who is a female, who's five foot three, you know, and and you're pretending like you're Jeff and and you've got brown hair and glasses and and you do a podcast. And I'm pretending like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? But where we came from, who we really are, we're probably in that realm at, right now, laughing and giggling mm -hmm. and poking one another going, hey, look at you. Do you then think that we're basically all aliens? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're wearing a, a suit that's made out of the earth. Mm. And we're going to leave it here. And we're it's just going to be like taking off a suit. And do you think that once we get back over on the other side, we'll think that this life here really wasn't that important or we took it too seriously? I don't think we'll think it wasn't important. I, I think that, I think it's very interesting. I think that the life here we're going to think was like interesting because we chose it for whatever reasons. And, and I'm sure it's going to serve those reasons for us. But I think sometimes we do take it too seriously. Mm -hmm. Because we forgot, because we think this is who I am. Yeah. And we think this is it. This little moment in time, this lifetime is it. And it's not at all. So, um, I think we'll get to, we'll get to have many adventures. I don't think it's just one. Like, this is it, this one, you better do it right, you better do it well. 
you know, sometimes I think we, we worry too much about, am I, am I doing okay? Am I doing this right? I, I, I don't think it's going to be like that when we get back to where we came from. Do you fear death at all? No, I fear suffering. Yeah. I don't want to suffer. Right. But no, dying, no, no. I, I've died so many times and left this body so many times, so many times. Yeah. It's just a, at, at one point I was allowed to see like how I could have another NDE if I wanted. Mm-hmm. And so, cause I was like, cause I was watching NDEs cause it, it's comforting sometimes to see people talking about like they went to heaven and their experiences. And I'm like, Oh yeah, there's there, they remember some stuff and, and they got some abilities that, you know, cause we're all psychic, but we get here and it just, everything gets pushed down and we get oppressed and silenced when we're little. And, and so when people have NDEs, a lot of the time, all that opens back up just like it did when, when you're a kid and you just know things and they're like, Oh, you don't know that. Or, or, you know, and so, or that's weird. If you do, you would be, you know, like strange. Don't tell, I remember being told, don't tell people that just keep that to yourself. Like don't tell them you have dreams and that came true and don't, don't do that. But, um, what was the question? I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. You already answered it. I was just asking you. <laughs> okay. if you I believe I was, I asked you if you feared death. Oh, yeah. No. Is there anything with the first experience or just meeting with the aliens afterwards later that is inspiring to you? So you mean the gray? Either the grays or the avatars. Oh, definitely the avatars. Oh, definitely. The gray, not so much, yeah. but the avatars definitely, and and just seeing from their perspective. Oh, it, it's it changes everything, because letting go of my identity and going, that's not really who I am. It, it, it frees you to truly love other people and truly pray for rain when your village is in a drought, even though you have a big hole in your roof. It Because your perspective is just, my perspective was so broadened, you know. And so I can look at any human and just be in awe. Like, I, I can see the the spirit, the, the beauty, the beauty in every human, every human. I remember one time I was sad about something and one of my beings came to me and said, I want to show you this. Look at, here's Gina sitting on her bed crying. And I said, oh yeah, that's sad. And he said, no, 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 that's Gina sitting on her bed crying. How rich is that experience? You don't get to do that just anywhere. Like even a sad experience, it's yours and it's your rich experience. It, it's it's a different perspective. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but the grays, I think, I'm not sure why that happened with the grays and I'm not sure if that's really like, I hope they decided to go and explore other planets and they, ours is boring to them. I hope they don't come back here. Yeah. (laughs) You mentioned earlier about getting beyond ourselves. Can you give us any tips on how to do that? Meditation, I think helps. Like I, I've been meditating like for a long, long, long time. And I think for me, um, I, I think just sitting in meditation, I calm the body down 
And so whatever the body wants, it's just going to have to wait. So my body's not going, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm thirsty. Oh, I want to go, you know. And so my body pretty much goes, oh, well, well she's going to do this 30 minute thing. So I'll just sit here and wait, you know. And so it calms the body down and then and then quieting my mind um, so that it's just not chattering like, oh, I need to go to the grocery store and I got to go clean this and I got to pick up that. And, you know, so I quiet my mind just by um, observing my thoughts if one comes up and then, but it's not mine. I'm not attached to it. And I just watch it go by through my mind, like a cloud just passing through and I go, there's a thought, but I don't identify with it. And then finally my thoughts will quiet down. You know, that's how I first started meditating in the very beginning so long ago. And now, you know, I guess after a lot of practice, it's pretty easy. I just sit down and, and let everything go, take a few breaths. And detaching from the physical, my physical life and my identity and what's really happening here. And so being open to more than what's actually happening here, I think has been really beneficial for me. Um, having experiences where you die and you recognize that you're so much more than this life and we all are. Um, You know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine and she asked me a similar question one time. And I said, can you just imagine the earth, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're gone, when you, after you die, like every, the traffic is still going to go, you know, things are still going to happen in the world. Mm -hmm. There's still going to be people over here fighting about this and people over here celebrating this and, you know, all of this variety that's on this planet and they're not going to be faced you know and after a while even the people closest to you are gonna they'll move on and they'll go on with their life because they have a life to live but i think focusing on the temporary the the fact that this life is is so temporary and I think that just helps to get it into perspective. It helps to get another perspective. What do you think <laughs> is the point of coming to earth and coming here in the first place? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, you could ask me that in different, in different decades in my life and I would give you a different answer. <laughs> um, I don't know that I know the answer to that question. I I think that probably I don't and I don't know that it's the same for everybody. As a matter of fact, I'm I guess it probably isn't the same for everybody because everybody has such different experiences, you know. But um for me, I think before I came here, I decided what my goals were, what what purposes I wanted to fulfill here, whether it was learning things or sharing things or um, helping with things or whatever it was. And I think I made contracts, you know, I want to accomplish this, 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 and this. And maybe I had a council or I had, you know, my beans that now come and get me sometimes. I think maybe it was a council like them. And, and so I, I think it's way more than one thing. And because there have been a few times, you know, when, when they said, oh, well, you could, you could have this experience and you can die like this. And, you know, that my Jeep is going down the road and it's rained too much and I hide your plane and I go into the Creek. And as I'm going down, I'm like, no, I can do more. And I just scream out. It's like my soul screams out. I can do more. I can do more, whatever that means which kind of gives me a clue that I must be doing something or I think I'm contributing something here. 
So I have to look for breadcrumbs because I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, after watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions or chit chat with you. Are you open to that? And if so, sure. how can they reach you? Yeah. Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, Gina Pascal, G-I-N-A, Pascal, P-A-S-C-H-A-L-L. Um, I do have an email. It's Gina Pascal Ministries at gmail.com. And that's because people think that what I do is really an undercover ministry. And so one of my friends made me a Gina Pascal Ministries at gmail.com. Um, so yeah, just for sure. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Ah, I, th I think seeing what we've gone through the last couple of years in the whole world and seeing, um, people reaching out to one another, just in our communities, you know, and helping one another and, and loving one another i think that we're building our communities again and i think that's something to really look forward to that humanity is all about love it really is we really really do love each other you know and that's the that's what keeps me going every day is that i know that deep down we really do love each other and we're going to be there for each other if you see a child getting hurt and there are 30 people there look at how many people run to go help that child and it's just an instinctive you know that's just our nature to love each other and to care for each other and i think that i see that coming out more and more and more so i think there's a very positive turn happening on the planet gina thank you for that message and for being my guest and off the air, we mentioned that you've had many NDEs, so I hope you'll come back and share more of your NDEs with us. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara Podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.